Senator in this place made an extraordinarily offensive and divisive statement. He blamed the horrific act of terror, of murder, not on the extremist right-wing terrorist, but on the victims of his evil acts. While families, friends, communities of those lost were still reeling from the shock, the senator blamed the victims. While those injured were being treated, this senator sought to further fan the flames of division. How pathetic. How shameful. A shameful and pathetic attempt by a bloke who's never been elected to get attention by exploiting diversity as a fault line for political advantage. Well, this motion makes it clear he does not speak for us. He does not speak for this Senate. He does not speak for this nation. And he does not represent Australian values. This motion makes clear that the Senate repudiates in the strongest terms the Senator's divisive statement and the extremist ideology that either motivates it or which he simply wishes to fan. And this motion delivers on our collective responsibility as senators, as leaders in our communities, to stand against hatred, to call out hate speech and to advocate for the values that make Australia the nation we hope it to be. We must repudiate those who seek to spread intolerance and hate and, in doing so, undermine our democratic values. Now, I want to be, briefly speak about this point. There is a difference between freedom of speech and hate speech. The former is a feature of our democracy. The latter is an attack on democracy. And let me explain why. A foundational principle of liberal democracies include foundational principles of liberal democracies include equality, justice and non-discrimination, that all citizens are equal, all equal members of the community. And attacks which purport to posit a justification that some citizens should be different, treated differently is an attack on the principles of liberal democracy. There is a difference between the robust contest of ideas and attacking people of a particular group because of the colour of their skin or the nature of their faith and dehumanising them. Because a central element in the way prejudice works is by dehumanising, by singling out people as outsiders, as second class, as not deserving the protections and dignity afforded to the rest of us. It is why we say legislative protections in hate speech are so important. It is why we on this side uh, and others in this chamber fought so hard to defend 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act from attempts to repeal it. You know, I do recall Senator Brandis advocating for its removal, stating people do have a right to be bigots. And I say hate speech cannot be defended on grounds of freedom of speech because it is an attack on our democracy, because it inflicts real and direct harm. Uh, and Senator Soker's response at one point was that, that people don't like hate speech when she was advocating for Mr Yiannopoulos to be given a visa. She said, well, the solution is better ideas. Well, I say this is not about the contest of ideas. It's about democratic principles. It's about foundational principles. Hate speech is inimical to democracy. We can't normalise it through a concept of better ideas. We have to be uncompromising in our rejection of racism, prejudice, discrimination and hate speech. And we must call it out wherever we see it. Now, I do acknowledge the leadership that Senator Cormann has shown. I acknowledge and honour the words of uh, Senator Birmingham yesterday. And just as I honour the position that so many good Liberals have taken over the course of the decades in this country, Malcolm Fraser and many others, since even John Howard putting One Nation last, I honour Mr Fisher. Mr. Fisher there are times in our history where our bipartisanship has enabled us to confront racism and hatred. White Australia policy being abolished, the introduction of the Racial Discrimination Act, the confrontation of one, one nation in its previous incarnation, the acceptance of so many Indo-Chinese refugees despite community concerns and dealing with them. This was bipartisanship. It is a great sadness, and I say this not as a partisan point but as an Asian Australian, it is a great sadness to me to see the way in which some on those sides do not honour that history. It's a great sadness in me uh, to see the way in which some on that side uh, have failed to repudiate uh, the ideology uh, the, uh, and the hate speech that we have seen in recent times. 
I would make the point that this, the senator who is being censured in his first speech argued for a return to the White Australia policy. You know, my parents married when the White Australia policy was still in place and it was abolished by Liberal and Labor governments. He also used a term associated with the Holocaust. To speak. It was a, a speech that didn't reflect the Australia we know, an Australia built by people from every country, from every part of the world, a strong, independent, multicultural nation. It is a sadness to, I think, all of us that many people, many coalition senators lined up and shook your hand, and I suspect many of them regret so now. I think it was disappointing to see uh, the motion, it's okay to be white, be voted in support. And it has been disappointing to see, but by those opposite, and it has been disappointing to see some government ministers being prepared to fan prejudice for political purposes. And I have in mind Minister Dutton's targeting of Victorians' African community and the focus on African gang violence, and even the way in which the Medivac bill has been discussed in the context of paedophiles, rapists uh, and murderers. And anybody who watched the project interview uh, would, would have, of Mr Morrison would have understood, I hope, that what Mr Waleed Ali was saying is that this is also about how you frame the debate. Those who use or fan intolerance and hatred for their own political gain are not doing the, only doing the wrong thing. They're actually harming our democracy in the process. So today I hope the Senate, Senate does censure this senator for his statement. And in doing so, we do take a stand against hatred and we are calling out hate speech. We are sending a clear message to the Australian people that people across the political stand landscape stand for values and principles that are central to our identity, Australian identity and Australian democracy. Inclusion, acceptance, respect and equality. And I hope that this moment that is Christchurch and its aftermath can in this country uh, generate a recognition of the importance of that occurring across the political spectrum. We're about to go into an election campaign and the contest will be fierce, but there are some things which are above the political contest, and this is amongst them. And if we do this, this makes our nation stronger at home and in the world. Yeah. Yeah.